God created the soul to be the consciousness of the spirit. The soul magnifies what's inside. The soul where your mind, your will and emotions is to amplify the God in you. It's to walk with the consciousness of the God in you. Now we have this hope as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul. God doesn't just want to renew your mind. But God wants to convince your mind that it's anchored. Once the word of God comes your way, it is true. Once the mind is transformed, the next line becomes that you made proof. I want to encourage somebody, don't faint. Don't faint. You have an anchor of the soul. Who is our high priest? The Bible says he's in the heavenlies. He has access. That means every word said about your life carries access and power. The place where they wanted to kill him was his protege was the spiritual son, was the life that he was going to send as a emissary, was the preservation of the posterity of the gospel and the man who would sit in position for the heritage of the apostolic mantle of that hour. Whoever knew that in the place where Paul was almost killed was the very life and seed of potential that was going to extend his ministry beyond his existence. Oh, did somebody understand it? God has a way of hiding your most potent seed in the most trying moment. God has a way of hiding the thing that preserves your heritage in the thing that seeks to kill you. I don't know who I'm speaking to. We all know that when Timothy started to follow Paul, he was the most trustworthy and most faithful minister. We know the story of Timothy. How that he was a boy raised uh, with, a, with a family that had believed and connected to God early. The faith which was in his grandmother Lois and his mother Eunice. Which Paul says he beholds in him also. In fact, he loved that boy so much. In our couples, we don't teach it. What was the original idea of why God creates marriage? The concept Corinthians 13. He says, if I can speak in tongues of men and even of angels, but have not agape, I'm only a lousy gong and clanging symbol. If I have sufficient faith so that I can remove mountains, make lame men walk, but have not agape, I am nothing. He says, and if I dole out all that I have to the poor, food, and if I surrender my body to be burned, or in order that I may glory, but have not agape, then I gain nothing. Now he's defining agape. He says, agape endures long. Agape is patient. Agape is kind. He's never envious, no boils over with jealousy. Agape is not boastful. Agape is not vainglorious. Agape does not display itself haughtily. Agape is not conceited. It's not arrogant and inflated with pride. Agape does not insist on its own rights or its own way. For it is not self seeking. It is not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of evil done. Come on, Uganda. And, oh, listen. It pays no attention to a suffered wrong. Agape bears up under anything and everything that comes. When you understand Agape, we are not even supposed to cancel over the most obvious. Why don't you love your wife? How can you say you don't love your wife when agape, God, is in the equation? It's not possible. God who is love can't tell me that this is my wife and I don't love her. It's not possible because he's love. I'm trying to say that if they frustrate you and they say, you know, you did not pass the interview, apply again until they give it to you if you want it. You never give up. You never give up. You try this and it fails. Tomorrow morning you get money again and do it. If you're sure that God has spoken to you about a thing, if you're confident that the essence of God is in that vision, regardless of how many times it faints, you continue doing it. You don't give up. That is how we win in adversity. You don't draw back to perdition. No. We are them that hold and believe to the saving of the soul. Tule miracle. We stick on that thing until it works. When you feel like you're out of wit's end and you're out of the power and energy to fight, the moment you can breathe and get up on your feet, walk again and go to that same place and tell the devil you think you started a war, you can play hard, but I play long and I will win whether you want it or not. Why? Because I'm more than a conqueror by Christ which strengthens me. You don't give up.
But regardless of what happens in Antioch, regardless of what happens in Iconium, regardless of what happens in all these places, Paul keeps the course. But the worst damage of adversity was Lystra when they beat him and they were sure that this man was dead. When he goes back to Lystra, many people are moving in self-condemnation. Oh, do you know how many people have lost the joy of salvation? Because every time they think that they, they have to match a certain stage and status and a certain place to earn a certain grace. Grace is free. We landed on a certain scripture in the Hadith, Shahih Bukhari, in the volume 8, book 76, Hadith number 470. <laughs> According to the Hadith, Shahih says, the prophet said, no one of you, listen, will enter paradise by his deeds. So they asked him, not even you, O messenger of Allah. And the guy says, eh, not even me, unless God covers me with grace. And I said, now if I don't have grace here, I want to see it. Banangi, Grow ye in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior. God is looking for someone who can get to a level where when the word of God says that you are rich, regardless of what you see in your pocket, for another day you will never doubt that you are. God wants you to be like a mustard seed. He wants you to get to a point where under any weather, any elements, any circumstances, any pressure, any words, any ground, hot or cold, dark or white, sandy or clay, black or yellow, stony or what, that at any one point, nothing hinders your progress. Level where you're wild. The doctor says, this is happening. You say, ah, 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 There's a doctor above doctors. There's a healer above healers. There's a power above powers. There's a life above life. Woo! Somebody shout glory. Mustard, baby. Mustard. Whether in the desert, you'll blossom. Whether in the... The Bible says that we are his workmanship created in Christ. God did not create you out of anything else, but he had to look into Jesus. He had to get into Jesus to get what will make you and me. He is the sole expression of the glory of God. The light being, the outraying or the radiance of the divine. And he is the perfect imprint and the very image of God's nature. Upholding and maintaining and guiding and propelling the universe by the mighty word of his power. If he be that God is the father of glory, it only follows that what comes out of him is glory. And you are born of God. You are of God, all ye little children. And you have overcome, for greater is he that is in you than the devil that is in the world. You just need to read the Bible and know who he is. He's the Alpha and the Omega. Imagine it. He's the author and the finisher of your faith. Imagine it. You understand? He's the beginning and the end. He's Rafa, Roh, he's Sidukenu. Your righteousness, Nisi, Obana. The moment you read it and put it in it, that you've seen him. You're going to be reading the Bible. And the light will go on. And you're like, oh my goodness, that's it. At that particular point, in John 3, 3, the Bible says, And Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He says, Except a man be born again, he cannot perceive and understand the kingdom of God. The Greek word there for again is the Greek word called anothen. Anothen means except a man is born from above. Born again is not just a transition from one thing to another thing. Being born again is not just the changing of your character and mind. Being born again is not simply embracing a story. Being born again woo, means you're born from above. John 3.31 The Bible says, He who comes from above is far above all others. Far superior to all others in prominence and in excellence. And the Bible says, he who comes, if your friends don't take you deeper in God, you're wasting your time. Hallelujah. 
Surround yourself with people who provoke your spirit to faith. People, you sit over lunch with them and start talking. Before you know it, you're like, Rakatala barondala. Where did you get that? Are you hearing me? Sit with people who make you pull your notebook and not something. Those are the ones you need. Get me a man who is always around people who meditate a certain way and also believes God a certain way. And I'll tell you a man who is surely confused. Your spouse sends you a divorce paper and you look at it and you say, Creator of the universe, what can you do? What can you do? Jesus, you will get HIV positive results. Name.